Hello. Welcome to my poster session on a vocabulary word wall. Vocabulary growth is directly related to school achievement. Vocabulary helps learners to think and to learn about their world. Expanding vocabulary provides unlimited access to new information for students. Penn Literacy Network emphasizes in their reading and writing across the content area that the specific skill of exhibiting vocabulary will enable students to concentrate on ideas and concepts in their readings. So today I'm going to show you how to create a ever-present digital word wall that you can have on a TV using a Raspberry Pi or some other laptop computer or some other old desktop computer and access to the internet or you can run it offline as well. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to need to do is create a website on GitHub. GitHub is a free service that stores uh, web pages, stores code. GitHub.com is the web address. It's pretty easy to set up an account. You just click on sign up. Then GitHub will walk you through the process. The first step is to put in your email. Then you create a password. Then you enter in a username. And then you just decide whether or not you want to receive product updates. I'm going to select no, because I already get them. Next, you have to solve this little puzzle. Pretty easy to solve. And then finally, we click on create our account. It's going to send you a email with a launch code that you're going to type in. And once you do that, it's going to allow you to sign into GitHub. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like to sign into GitHub. I'm going to close this window. And now I'm going to sign in in my account. When you sign in, you might have comments that are listed on repositories that you follow. Or you might be presented with the main screen. Either way, in order to get to your repositories, they're listed over here on the left hand side. But what we want to find out is how do you end up copying a repository of somebody else? The link over here, actually down here, is a QR code that will take you directly to my repository for the vocabulary word wall. Here's what it looks like. It's a listing of files. And when you set up your account, you'll also have a web page. Right now, I have no classes selected. I can choose a class, some test classes I have in here, and I get my digital word wall. So let's talk about how do you get this code. I'm going to do this by looking for another repository that I could copy. So I'm going to click on Explore. For you, you would go ahead and use my QR code, and it would take you right to it. Or you could search for the um, name of my repository or my name Mr. McLaughlin and look for the repository that way but I'm going to look for something that I can just copy real quick I don't even know what this is but we're gonna click on it here's a repository if I want to make a copy of this for myself all I have to do on the upper right hand side is click on this button called fork. When I do that, I make a copy of this for myself that I can then use. 
So I'm going to click fork. It's going to tell me where we should make a copy of this to. I'm going to select Mr. McLaughlin. And when I do that, I get a copy of it in my repository. And you can see it's Mr. McLaughlin and then the name of that repository. Let's go and explore the repository for the vocabulary word wall. There are a few things that you'll have to change in order to make this work for you. The first and most obvious is the word list. In order to make the code so that I could reduce the number of errors that would possibly happen, I have added in an extension to the end of each file that would represent a class. And it's underscore wordlist.md. And you can see I have a new class, underscore.wordlist.md, null, which means there's nothing in it. That's for my empty class. And then test class. So you could create a new class called geometry, maybe, or history, or any subject that you want, underscore wordlist.md. It's important that you follow that naming structure. Otherwise, the computer won't be able to find your class. Inside this file, is a listing of words. I should go back and show you that. I clicked on the little pencil over here just to edit the file. Then in this listing of words, I have four phrases because they could be multiple words, the word or phrase, a colon, and then a number. The number represents how big it is inside the word wall. Each word and number pair is separated by a comma. The last word and number pair should not have a comma after it. That could cause some errors when processing the page. When you're all done, I'm going to make a change here. Change this to pixels. When you're all done, you have to hit commit changes and that will save your files. Now the changes have been made. The other change I have to go in and make on my vocabulary word wall is on the web page itself that displays. That's on index.html. And you can see I have in here a drop down for my classes. This is the name of the file and the computer will automatically add the extension for you. This is what shows up in the dropdown. <clears throat> so if you wanted to add a new class, you would just copy one of these options. Edit the file. Paste it in exactly the same line and change the name of the class. Once you're all done, everything else is going to be handled by the code down here. Don't change any of this code. Otherwise, you could end up breaking the word wall. You could always make another copy of it by forking it again. So you could delete this instance and then create another one and make a copy. It's really not that hard to make a, another copy. Once you have put that in your word wall, and I'm going to go into my word list here and create a new file which this button here underscore word list dot md that's the important part and I'll put it in some words arc circle kite. And you can see I made them different sizes and the last entry does not have a comma after it. When I'm done, I just hit commit new file. And now I've created geometry word I'm going to go to my word cloud again and refresh it. And there's geometry. 
And it may take a minute for it to show up as GitHub takes a little bit to populate the cache. And now there we go. It has populated and knows that the file exists. And now when I switch it to geometry, I can see I get arc, kite, and circle. If you know some things about HTML and CSS, feel free to go in and modify some of the look and feel of this. Some of the settings down here affect the word cloud itself. So you can go ahead <clears throat> and modify that. Like here's the canvas. Uh, if you don't want to modify it, just leave it alone. The other file that's important here that works with the word cloud is the actual JS file. which is found right here, wordcloud2.js. This is the JavaScript file that we're using. The last piece that's important to know here is how do you get the actual website? Well, that's not too difficult. You go into the settings up here and you look at pages and <clears throat> your site will automatically have this page listed, which will be your username dot G-I-T-H-U-B dot I-O slash vocabulary word wall, which is the name of the repository. It should be currently pointing to the branch, which is G-H pages, and it should have the root as the folder. You don't want to select a theme because that will end up changing some of the styles that are on your page. You just want to leave these settings alone. That's all for creating the word wall. Feel free to refer back to this site and I will keep um, the GitHub repository updated for you. And if there's any questions, feel free to reach out. It's been great seeing you.